Welcome to my guide to the basics of object oriented design. This guide is great if you just want to learn the absolute base object oriented design, but it is designed for the Cambridge A level syllabus. So there's a few things here which are a little bit unpythonistic, but I will highlight them to you so you know if this is generally good practice or if this is good practice for Python. Let's begin with why you should be moving to object oriented design. Yup, let's be honest, your basic Python scripts are boring. They're just batch, they do nothing, and it's fine. And to be honest, if you're a scientist and you want a quick program out there, that's fine. But as soon as you start to make more complex programs, you need something that's going to really support you and scale with you. You know, functions are all right, but let's be honest, we're here to do GUIs, web programming, games programming, app programming, and to be honest, semi-decent Python. Um, many will argue and tell you quite rightly that Python's actually object-oriented from the ground up and hides a little bit of that from you for beginner programs. And that's true too. So, functions, yep, they're handy enough in Python, okay for small programs, you ain't gonna make the next God of War without a few new tricks. And so that's really why once you've got the basics of functions up, you should be moving to object-oriented programming as soon as possible. So, what are some of the key concepts that you'll need for the A-level? Well, in Python, and this is just general good Python practice, attributes, methods, instances, inheritance, and polymorphism. These are incredibly useful concepts um, that do you take a little bit of getting your head around. Now, the Cambridge a level requires these and they are used in other languages but to be honest in Python they're, they're kind of optional extras in some ways. Containment, getters and setters. So we will cover these but I will flag when we're doing things that are a little bit unpythonistic. So how do we get start with some object orientation? So the first thing is um, to have a look at classes. Um, the key characteristics of classes in Python is they can be accessed from anywhere within a program and you can make multiple objects. Let's have a little bit of a look at this. So, your class character, this declares a simple class. Uh, this is the important line to initialize your attributes. This line has to be done this way, it's not negotiable. Notice the two underscores before and after. And then you have your attributes, which, you know, if you're a beginner, they look a lot like variables and act a lot like variables. Then we move on to methods. Again, notice the self here, very much like a function. And uh, let's just see how this works in real life in the program. So, James equals character. And notice how we're creating an instance. It's important to think that those things we've just uh, designed as a class are actually a bit like blueprints or a recipe and the actual product in this case will be James. And as you can see, James.printBasics prints those basics for us. But, you know, we don't have to just do that. We can also do uh, another character. And again, you'll notice that that character also can be called using, in this case, Maximus. And again, we're printing the basics here. So watch, and it prints both of them. Um, in Python, you can uh, just call out anything by just calling it the name. So you can use maximus.name quite easily. And you can set it in Python just by, um, and just the same as you would any other variable, basically. And you do that, you can see that. And you can see that uh, we're just going to put in uh, something to just print it directly. And you, as you can see, you have direct access. Even this very, very basic concept is much, much better than using global variables, okay? So even if you don't learn anything else about classes, learning just to use some basic uh, classes and attributes is, is already very useful. So, we saw in that example, James equals the character. Notice how to call the methods. 
you could now use the instance. So it's james.printbasics and you can change attributes by using the name and a dot. Very simple. Now, the word of warning is, I am teaching the A-level course and CAIE are not too keen on this, but in the real world, this is how it's done in Python, okay? So understand that for your exam, they're gonna make it a little bit more complicated and it's a little bit unpythonistic. But in terms of what you can do in real programming, job done. Right, so in part two, we're looking at inheritance and polymorphism. And to do this, we've created a base character for our RPG, and now we're gonna create some knights and wizards. Let's have a look at what I've done to the initial class. I've added a couple of extra methods. One, print me. Now this does exactly the same as print basics, but you're gonna see polymorphism in action. So this is gonna be really cool when we get it together. And finally, print intro. This has literally been added so you can see the difference between inheriting a method and inheriting an attribute in Python. So here is class wizard. Notice how it's got character. Now it that means it's going to inherit automatically all of the methods from character. However, you also need to initialize character as part of this. So you see the character dot in itself. That's important to add the parent classes in terms of their attributes. Right, let's have a look. And I think this is a really important point I need to underline. Lots of students have this problem that they're able to get at the methods of the parent, but they're not necessarily able to get at uh, the attributes. So let's have a little check. So Merlin equals wizard. Okay, great. So can I get at, what can I get at? Hmm, I'm not sure. So let's see. Um, okay, let's try one of the uh, methods. So I, can I print the intro? Yes, I can. So that has automatically happened without any extras. But notice how I haven't actually got the attributes. So that's the real problem here. So this line here is really important. So let's just go quickly edit that. Now, admittedly, it's quite a lot of lines. So I've uh, just commented it. But now you'll see that this will run perfectly with the attributes inherited. Okay, so next bit, um, here's where we're going to actually print it and fingers crossed, it works perfectly. There you go. Now that might not look exciting, but it will save you a lot of pain in the long run. There you go, all sorted. Right, so um, in the same way you can add a knight. So, uh, we've got a wizard, we've got a knight. Now polymorphism means the ability to take various forms. In Python, polymorphism allows you to define methods in the child class with the same name as defined in their parent class. So have a look at this. Okay, can you spot the difference? Yeah. Dear old Merlin here, or the uh, wizard class, has magic. But the armor is only available for knights. So when you use print me, it immediately prints magic and armor for the two uh, child classes. And that is really cool because you can call the same idea and it does different things. Now, one important thing to notice is that in Python, sometimes we're not quite sure what's in our things. So there's a very useful function called vars, which will print all the variables available within a class. So if you print vars Arthur, that's just a really helpful thing in terms of helping with debugging. And it's definitely helped me a lot over the years. Okay, so this is object oriented for the Cambridge International Examinations. And these are some functions that are used in various languages, but are not particularly a priority in Python, either because they're done automatically or um, because they're considered unpythonistic. So I will be quite clear on this. Um, just like a spoiler warning, I'm warning you, this stuff is pretty unpythonistic, but you need it for the exam, so you better go with it.
Now the first object is object containment. And now there's nothing by itself which is unpythonistic in this. Um, it's just that in Python, it's just your choice. Uh, if you want to contain things, you can choose to or not. Um, there's no force in this at all. And object containment basically means it is something within. So you've got horse, and within your horse, you've got head, legs, tail, eyes, mouth. Um, if you're drawing your 3D horse, these are the kind of things that you would have in it. Now there's another concept called aggregation, and that means it can exist with or without the rest. So the saddle, it can be on the horse, it doesn't have to be on the horse. It's your choice whether it exists with or without the horse. And in Python, that is literally your choice. Another one here is, is just look at these objects within objects. Notice how the classes can have classes inside them. This is called containment. Um, it's not really recommended in Python um, because you can just declare them as such, but this can force it to happen. And you can call the class methods inside. Now, as I said, Python doesn't really use this much, but it's available and something you might be asked for in the exam. So a setter, I've just shown you the Python main method of doing it, but you can do setters within it. Now to make this a little bit more Pythonistic and actually useful, I've added the random module. Now the random module enables me to create random characters quite quickly. And in Python, you can set objects from anywhere in the file. But sometimes a setter can be useful. And this one creates random values for a knight. And also it's good for bulk setting of uh, things. So that's really the only time we would use it in Python. But I would say in the exam, you might be asked to individually set things. Private attitudes. Now Python relies on politeness. It's a very polite language. It is the English, it's the British uh, kind of thing. I know it was made by a Dutch person, but I, I imagine that the Dutch person that created this is a very polite chap. Possibly not in real life. But when it comes to attributes, he made a very polite version. So his single underline suggests that this is a variable within a class and shouldn't be played with unless you really want to. It's the equivalent of saying, please don't play with this. Yeah, please. Um, double underscore makes it really private uh, and it is possible to override if the programmer really needs to. Um, there's a little bit to discourage you um, but nothing that fight and replace wouldn't fix Im immediately. But if somebody's double underscored it, they're kind of making it seriously. Now I often get asked in my, by my students, uh, uh, should I do a double underline or a single underline in the exam? Well guys, don't forget, you're handwriting this. Most examiners won't be able to tell the difference anyway, so it's your it's your call effectively. Uh, but double under double underline will make it really private. Okay, so I for this example I've replaced health with double underscore health. This effectively makes this a local variable inside a function. So let's let's have a look at this. Look, you can see I've clearly declared it. I haven't put any mistakes in there. But as soon as I try to under get at my health, I can't get at my health. It's been hidden inside something. Watch carefully. Dun, 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 dun. Oh no, I can't get in it. I'm sure it's in there. I'm really sure it's in there. So um, this is where we have something called a method of a getter and, and it's quite similar to calling something from inside a function and returning it. So now I'm going to print arthur.health and it's going to return that to me. And ta-da! We have the health which apparently is 24. Now this stops casual playing with this attribute by only allowing it to be accessed inside the class. And this is very useful uh, when you have multiple people working on a project. It says, look, this one is really something I'm only gonna be using inside the class. So with this, we do need to use a getter. And this returns the health attribute outside the class. And this line calls it. Now, a couple of exam hints for you Cambridge A-level people. CAE 
C-A-I-E, love their private attributes, absolutely love them. So expect to see them in your exam. You will also need to use these setters and getters to manipulate attributes. Okay, here is uh, an exam question. Write program code to define the game element class. And ta-da, that is the mark scheme. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, if you are a real Pythonista, please look away now from this horror movie. Okay, so this is the finale where we bring it all together. So these are the main parts. We imported random module for using the setter. We initialized the basic character class. And then this is the first method. This setter uh, creates all of the random ints. Now, if you look, you could automatically do that every single time, but this way gives you a choice to set it or not set it. And this is an example of how to get private attributes. Finally, let's do some polymorphism. Here is the wizard, it's the first child class. Don't forget that if you want to use the parent attributes, you need to include this line. And this makes it polymorphic. Second child class, can you spot the difference? Hopefully by now you can see that the difference is armor. Here is our knight, created a knight there. And then we create a wizard, Merlin. And let's have a look at this. And so what we've done is we're gonna create your character. Would you like to be a wizard or a knight? WRK, and what's your name? If you type in K, a great knight is created. If you type in W, a great wizard shimmers into existence. Otherwise, well, clearly you're not that smart if you don't know how to type W or K and you become a basic peasant, which is just the basic character. So choose your name and cast. Creates a nice wizard or just that plain character. And let's see what that code will do for us. So notice the polymorphism. If you're a knight, you get your armor. If you're a wizard, you get your wizard. And if you're just the basics, there you go. So let's just have a little run through this program and, and see how it goes. So the first thing it does is it creates Arthur and Merlin. And then you get to choose. I've chosen a wizard. Hmm, let me think. Who's a good wizard? Ah, Harry. Now there's a game to be made here and I would be very happy to make that game but that's enough for your A-levels. If the gods of YouTube deliver me a few subscribers then uh, I'll consider making the rest. Thank you very much.